I call this a monster tank, but I'm not really sure if these guys really are true monsters. I mean, when you compare these fish with these fish, yeah, they're, um, these guys are definitely monsters in comparison with them. And even these fish over here, when you compare these fish with, let's say, those fish down there, these guys are definitely monsters compared to those down there. But when you compare my big boys to some of those true monsters, those monsters that in the wild eat children, um, I'm not really sure if my fish categorize as monsters. I guess it all comes down to your personal opinion of what a monster fish really is. Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. Um, today I want to give you guys a look at my first aid kit for my monster fish. Like I said, are these monster fish? Um, let me know your opinion in the comment section below. But with these guys, um, they're big, bigger than most fish that people keep. And you know, they're in a glass box and problems can occur. So it's always important to have a first aid kit to have medicines and just preparedness for whatever disasters can occur. And that's why today I want to give you guys a look at my medicine cabinet for my monster fish. So first off, this video is not a sponsored video. So for all, look at that yarn. Um, but yeah, so for all the products that you're going to see today, I'm not being paid to promote any of them. They're just products that I use often, well, whenever necessary to keep my fish alive. Products that I find to be um, very decent to get the job done, to keep my fish nice and with a smile on your face. And secondly, if you're new to the channel, this tank is 350 gallons. This fish right here is a flagtail prochila disc. This right here is a cichla orinoco peacock bass. Cichla ocellaris peacock bass, my biggest fish. That right there is a female gold jaguar cichlid. Some now tilapia, three of them. This is a pair of convicts and these right here are their tiny little babies. This big guy right here is a pure size cichlid. Yes, that black mark is a part of his design. He's not sick. Um, we have an African leaf fish, Mayan cichlid, Grand Aquarium, Peacock Bass. So those are some of the common questions I get all the time. So hopefully you won't have to ask that in this video. So yeah, today I'm gonna to give you guys a brief look at my medicine cabinet for my aquariums. I'm gonna give you guys a look at the product and a brief description of what I use it for. So as always, any questions that you have, feel free to let me know in the comment section below and enjoy. This is actually my second time trying to make this video. The first time I had the products all on top of the tank, the fish, they got freaked out. They made the water all cloudy. So I'm trying it again the next day. But yeah, first off, Epsom salt. This is, let me see. Yeah, this is the cheapest out of all the products that I'm gonna show you guys. Regular plain Epsom salt. I know sometimes they have like lavender Epsom salt and Epsom salt with different flavors. You want plain Epsom salt. I think this was like $4, as you can see from Walgreens. And this stuff has a number of benefits. So first thing, if I have the ick disease. Ick disease is such a common parasite, it's crazy. Before I used to think that ick wasn't really a big deal because there are so many different ways to treat it. However, that's definitely not the way to look at it because certain fish are just more sensitive to others. So even though you know 100 ways to treat ick, certain fish just don't take it as easy as other fish. A good example is these peacock bass. Um, before I had my giant azules, one of them died in like a matter of days from the ick disease because he just was a fish that is sensitive to the ick and he doesn't handle it as well as other fish. Same thing with loaches, same thing with silver dollars. So certain fish just don't handle ick as well. And this is definitely one of your best treatments. So what you do is raise the temperature, you dose some Epsom salt, and that's one of the uses of Epsom salt. Another use is for when you have a fish that's not eating. So let's say um, one of your fish stops eating and you start noticing white stringy poop, that's most likely because of an internal parasite. So what you do is you dose this in a water column, or you could dose it in the food that you're feeding them. But most of the time, if they're not eating, it's best to just dose it in a water column. And this stuff is gonna help move the metabolism. And sometimes, if, the, if you catch it soon enough, you could definitely help a fish that's not eating. So um, yeah, those are the two main treatments that I use, ick, and for internal parasites, and maybe some other parasites that you might come across. But you know, ick and that internal parasite that causes the fish to not eat, those are the most two common parasites and Epsom salt is definitely a great treatment. Now, because this stuff is um, just so natural, I like to just dose it in my waters like every other week. Certain chemicals, you definitely don't wanna use it when you don't need to, but Epsom salt is not really a problem to dose it every other week. It not only helps the fish with their metabolisms, it helps plants if you have plants in your aquariums. So yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite products. I always keep it in stock. 
because you never know when you gotta use it. Now, if I do have a severe case of the ink disease and Epsom salt is just not enough, or if I have a fish that's just too sensitive and it needs a really fast treatment, my next step would be to use a medication. And the common one that I use is Cuperman. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but this is a product from Seacom and it's basically a copper treatment. I use this and I also use Super Ick. I don't have any of the Super Ick, but that, I use it just as often. I just get either one, whichever one I see in stock. And both of them are the medicated version. They turn your water blue, it's a copper treatment. Same thing with the Epsom salt. You gotta raise your temperatures high, and once it's high, you treat this stuff. And like I said, if it's a very severe case of Ick, if I'm too late with the Epsom salt, um, this is definitely the way to go. This is what I have to do with my peacock bass. Now consider this, 350 gallons, but this tank is connected with this tank, so we have about 525 gallons, and imagine how much of this stuff I had to use for such a large aquarium. But it did um, cure the ick disease that was in this aquarium, and thanks to that, some of these fish are still alive today. So definitely, um, if you have an ick disease and it's just out of hand, I rely on copper treatments like Curpamin from Seacom. Now, I didn't talk about how you get the ick disease. Ick disease is just so common. A lot of times when you introduce a new fish that has the parasite, that's probably the most common way you get it. But sometimes you can have your fish in the tank for years, and then one day they just randomly get it. And that's because I read that the ick disease is just a parasite that sometimes can be dormant in your aquarium. And the moment that your fish um, immune system goes down, and that immune system can drop from aggression, a loss in rank in the tank, from simple things like that and then your fish could get ick. So ick is like a parasite that this tank possibly can have ick. I haven't added any new fish to this tank, even though these fish just came in like a month ago, but no new fish from outside. All these, look at that yarn. Yeah, all these fish came from my aquarium, so they all share the same water. But yeah, no new fish from out of my house. But yet, if like one of these fish gets stressed out too much, like this peacock bass was trying to eat this guy, if he was to constantly chase him nonstop, he could potentially get ick, even though I have no new fish, because ick is a dormant parasite. It could be in this aquarium, but the moment these fish, their immune system drops, it attacks them. As long as their immune system stays high, um, I don't have any problems. And to keep the immune system high, of course, water changes and a healthy diet. Now, I also told you guys that I use the Epsom salt to treat for internal parasites. Now, if I have a severe case of internal parasites and the Epsom salt is just, I'm too late with it, um, and it's just not as effective. I rely on medications. And so far, the best medication, in my opinion, for internal par parasites is Prazipro. Now, I'm out of focus. Oops. I'm out of focus, but Prazipro, um, this, I've used many products for internal parasites. It seems like these South American cichlids, um, they're prone to getting parasites. I have a number of fish that have had many internal parasites, including the Green Terrors, um, the Geophagus braziliensis, this guy right here. Some of my fish over here, um, Mesoharis ornatus, which is this green fish to the left. All these fish come from South America, and a number of times I had to treat them with the Prezi Pro because they just kept getting eternal parasites. And the same thing like it, these eternal parasites strike them when they're stressed out. So the moment they lose a rank in a hierarchy, um, they get stressed out and then they stop eating and next thing you know they have an internal parasite. So, like I said, when a case was too severe for Epsom salt, I turned to this Prazi Pro. This stuff is expensive, but no doubt this stuff works. And when you keep Central and South American cichlids, more so with South American cichlids, um, it's definitely a very handy tool to keep in your toolkit, to keep in your medicine cabinet, because these guys do often get internal parasites. On the same topic of internal parasites, let's say you see your fish not eating and immediately you try to treat it. Um, one of the treatment methods, like I said, is Epsom salt. You could try to feed the fish the Epsom salt by mixing the Epsom salt with their food. The only problem is that Epsom salt will make their food taste nasty. So the solution is to use a flavor enhancer, which is garlic guard. So basically this stuff tastes like garlic and fish apparently love the taste of garlic where it just makes them want to eat. And not just with fish, I hear it does the same thing with dogs and even with humans. Of course, you don't want to use this for humans. But yeah, this stuff is liqu liquefied. You can use actual garlic, but I just think this is easier because it's liqu liquefied and you just dip it with your food that's mixed with Epsom salt or any other medication that you mix with your food. And while the medicine or the solution that you make may be disgusting, this might help them to eat it. So definitely good to have on hand. It's not really a chemical, but it's definitely good 
if you're trying to feed your fish something that's nasty. The next product I'm going to show you guys is for physical damages. If you see any nips and fins, any scratches, scrapes, this next stuff is the stuff that you want to use. And it is Melifix. This is a product from API and is good for just healing up those scratches, scars, any punctures, anything like that. So if you get your fish to fight, or not intentionally of course, but if your fish happen to fight, or if these big guys run into like a piece of wood and scratch yourself or hurt themselves physically, this is definitely the stuff to use. Now you can see I have the pond version, and that's because the pond version is a little bit more concentrated. I have such large aquariums, so it spreads out easily when I use the pond the pond stuff versus the regular aquarium stuff because the aquarium stuff I would have to use like half a bottle for a tank this size. Of course it is best if you do have a fish that's injured to put them in a quarantine tank but some of these fish as big as they are um, it's easier just to dose the whole tank especially if you have multiple fish with injuries. So this is definitely my go-to for um, physical injuries on my fish. After that we have a product from the same company API and this is Pimafix, and this is for funguses. So let's say like the uh, Melifix heal scars, but let's say you're too late with the Melifix and they have a scar and that scar starts to grow a fungus, you're gonna wanna treat with Pimafix. Now I, I rarely have to use this. Um, this stuff is almost full because as soon as I notice a scar on my fish, I go ahead and treat with the Melifix. So if you go ahead and treat with the Melifix, Melifix fast, you really won't need that Pimafix. But let's say you notice it um, late, let's say one of these catfish get a scar, I really won't notice it because they hide a lot. So if I do notice a fish with like a giant fungus on the side, this is the stuff I want to use. It has happened before, but definitely something that's not too common in my fish run. And the last product that I have in my first aid kit is clout. Now honestly, the only reason why I have this product is because I hear just so many people have such good things to say about this product. I never I used it, but it never really solved any of my problems, and that's because it mainly deals with, um, like, what does it deal with? It deals with anchorworms, lice, leeches, and other large flukes and giant parasites. And luckily, I never had to deal with that, so that's probably the reason why it never really worked for me, if I, because I only tried it with, like, small parasites. But this stuff is supposed to be good for larger nasty looking parasites and once again i never really experienced any of that in my aquarium so i'm grateful but the reason why i keep it is because so many people have good things to say about this clout so just in case i get like a fluke or one of those giant parasites i got the treatment so yeah everyone that is a look at the medicines that i have to keep my fish nice and healthy now these fish being trapped in these boxes of course they will get sick they will get parasites um, that's natural. I'd be a liar if I told you guys that my fish didn't get sick because they do get sick. And of course, it's always good to have a treatment. Now, like I said, none of these companies ask me to make videos about their products. I'm not being paid for this. This is just in my experience of keeping fish, this is what works. Of course, we all have different experiences. So if you know any products that I did not list that could be very useful in our medicine cabinet for our aquariums, Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Now, of course, if you stay on top of your water changes, if you do your regular maintenance, um, you will rarely have to use this stuff. Whenever I do have to use it, it sucks because that means one of my fish is sick or injured. It's definitely nothing nice to experience. So yeah, just stay on top of your water changes, stay on top of um, feeding your fish the right stuff at the right times. And you have this stuff in stock, you just won't have to use it. I think it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. But yeah, everyone, that's it for today's video. Um, getting ready to feed these fish. They're all getting pretty desperate now. I've been standing in front of the tank for a while now, and they're hungry. So yeah, this guy is like swimming back and forth. These fish over here, they're like starting to fight each other because they're so hungry. So I'm getting ready to feed these fish. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but down here I have a um, hospital. This used to be my hospital tank. That's my problem. Whenever I keep a hospital tank for too long, I end up converting it into a different aquarium. So now I gotta use a different tank for a hospital tank. But now I'm using this as a um, quarantine tank for my feeders because with these juvenile peacock bass, they are pretty picky eaters and I'm gonna have to give them feeders. Of course, you can't use feeders directly from the store because they're sick and dying. And then I'm gonna have to use these products if I use those feeders because they're gonna get my, they're gonna get my fish sick. So instead I buy feeders, I put them in this tank and I just treat them with parasites um, just give them a nice time to get nice and healthy and then feed them to my fish. For feeders, I have the rosies 
and I have some mosquito fish. I put all the rocks in because I want the mosquito fish to eventually breed. But yeah, that's that. Um, I would do a little feeding, but it's probably gonna take a lot longer than I would anticipate. So yeah, I'm just gonna end the video here. As always, if you like the video, make sure you subscribe. If you want more, subscribe too. And um, I'll catch you guys on the next one.